Hey guys, I think I've got a very good video to help you when you're doing a welfare analysis. Now, first of all, what's a welfare analysis? In general, what a welfare analysis is when your teacher asks you to find the consumer surplus or the producer surplus or the government revenue or the government outlay, harm to third parties or benefit to third parties, okay? What really is going on oftentimes when you're doing a welfare analysis is you're basically got some status quo where you're not doing anything, the government's not intervening at all, and we call it like policy one, and then you come in with say a tax, that'd be your policy two, and then there's gonna be this delta column, okay, this difference column, okay, what's the impact? And basically, you've got all these different groups making up your welfare table for your welfare analysis, like the consumer, the producer, the government perhaps, third parties perhaps, and you're doing this like, figuring out what's their changes in surplus, right? Consumer surplus, producer surplus, again, government revenue, government outlay, and the impacts on third parties. That's a welfare analysis. And here's gonna be the key to doing a welfare analysis. It is to think vertically. Now, I've gotta do a little groundwork here, and I'm gonna get in the weeds just a little bit to set this up, but stick with this video because it will help you out, okay? Here's the thing, guys. In a microeconomics class, what we generally do, us teachers, with you guys at first, is try to get you to think horizontally, okay? Why is that? Because we introduce you originally to supply and demand. When you find this graph, you're focused on supply and demand. You don't even have this MPC or MPB at all. You just got supply and demand when you first learn this. And what you're used to doing is in a math class talking about curves that shift up and down. And there's a reason for that. Because in a math class, they put the dependent variable on the vertical axis. Now, let me just show you what I mean, okay? Here's a supply curve, right? Now, if this was a new supply curve, what did that supply curve do? Well, when you get into our classes, a lot of students are gonna to wanna to say, oh, it went down, so supply must have decreased. And we say, no, 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 that's an increase in supply. Supply has shifted right. So we're trying to get you in this horizontal orientation to the graph. Now, why is that? Because we actually flip the axes on you. Price, which we're measuring vertically, is the independent variable, and the quantity supply, quantity demand, and the quantity right there is the dependent variable. And so here's what we're saying the quantity supplied has increased, right? The quantity supplied has increased at all price points. If I was to put a new supply curve there, right? What did that supply curve do? In fact, sometimes I can make it even a little bit harder on students. I'll do something like this to make it really look like it shifted up. And, you know, and if they say it shifts it up, they might say it's an increase in supply, which we know it's not, right? Because we have a horizontal orientation of the graph. No, 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 this supply curve right here has shifted left. The quantity supplied is decreasing. The quantity supplied, this thing, is decreasing at all price points. So, again, the reason we talk about supply and demand as shifting right and left is the quantity supplied and quantity demanded, which we're measuring on the horizontal axis, is the dependent variable, okay? We kind of switched the graph on you, and now we got to get you in this right-left orientation. And usually, we're scared to confuse you, so we leave you there, sometimes for the whole class. But really, I think the best thing to be told, and again, we're at Econ Buster, so we're trying to bust this stuff. We're trying to like bring everything to light, okay, to make things easier, kind of break through that, conclusion, that confusion to get to clarity. It's kind of weird, but that's what we're trying to do. When you get later on in the class and you start talking about this curve, not as supply as much as the marginal private cost, and not this curve, not as demand, but more as the marginal private benefit, guess what your orientation should be? It should be vertical again, okay? Why is that? Because MPC and MPB, we are measuring vertically, okay? So, dollars per unit, you can see it right there, okay? We're measuring a lot of things vertically, like price, like we've already talked about, but we're also talking about MPC and MPB and MSC and MSB. All of those things we're measuring vertically, and here's the deal. If you've stuck with me this far, fantastic, here's the deal. When you see this curve as MPC and not as supply, MPC is the dependent variable, the thing you're measuring vertically. Here's what I mean by that. Your MPC is dependent upon which good you are producing. And so what I mean by that is, when you see this curve as the MPC, you are back to a vertical orientation. In other words, let's just say the price of inputs goes up. Price of inputs goes up, right? Well, that means the marginal private cost is increasing at every unit of output increasing the MPC curve has shifted up and yes when the MPC curve shifts up the supply curve shifts left okay how about in 
improvement in product production technology, an improvement in production technology, what would happen? Well, the MPC would decrease at all units of output, okay? And you should properly say the MPC has not shifted right. You should not say that. That's not proper. It has shifted down, okay? Why should you say it shifted down? Because the marginal private cost, which you are measuring vertically in dollars per unit, has decreased, right? It's decreased at all units of output, okay? And here is the kicker for this video. When you are doing a welfare analysis, you, when you see this curve and this curve, you are really seeing these curves as MPC, not supply so much. And this curve is MPB, not demand so much, okay? So your orientation goes vertical. Hope that makes sense to you. I know that's kind of like interesting. And so let me just say it one more time, just to make sure we've got it. You see this curve as a supply curve. Well, you're seeing this as price and this is quantity supplied and absolutely the quantity supplied is dependent on the price and that supply curve is just right and left. If you see this curve as the MPC curve, you are measuring MPC now vertically and the marginal private cost of production, okay, for any particular good, because marginal cost means per unit cost, is dependent upon which good you are producing. So when I see this curve as an MPC curve, I should talk about it as shifting up and down, the marginal private cost going up at all levels of output, going down at all levels of output. And that should help us with our welfare analysis. So let's get to it. Let's actually do consumer surplus and we're gonna do producer surplus and then we're gonna kind of get involved. We're gonna make it a little bit more difficult as we go. So right off the bat, hey, what'd be my consumer uh, surplus and producer surplus? And I know most of y'all can find it, but let's just make sure we fully understand it, okay? We can pick any unit of output. So I'm gonna pick that unit of output right there. And guess what? We take that unit of output, that is my per unit benefit to the consumer. Why am I saying that? What curve am I on? I'm on the MPB, right? There's this dot, I mean, sorry, this curve is made up of a bunch of dots representing the marginal private benefit to the consumer. This vertical distance, that's right, think vertically, is the marginal private benefit. This is the price they're gonna have to pay for that unit. This is the price they're gonna have to pay. The difference between the benefit and the cost, because the price they pay is their cost, is the surplus. So this vertical right there is the consumer surplus. And so we'd say, okay, surplus, surplus, all of these verticals that are right over each unit of output is the consumer surplus, making this triangle the consumer surplus, producer surplus, right? Price is a per unit benefit to the producer. So again, I'm kind of smearing that a little bit, but that unit of output that, that's the price, that's the benefit the supplier is going to get. The curve is a marginal private cost, right? It's measuring the marginal private cost. So this is my marginal private cost for that unit. When I produce that unit, this vertical distance is the marginal private cost. This is the per unit revenue or benefit I'm going to get. The difference is the surplus or profit, right? Surplus or profit. So these verticals between this met vertically measured benefit and ver vertically measured cost, these verticals is the surplus, producer surplus. Okay, now let's get a little more involved. Let's bring in a tax wedge, right? So we bring in a tax wedge, we implement a tax. So put that little dot there and that there, bring this over, that's on the demand MPB, which we think that's the consumer. So this is the price consumer. This dot's on the supply MPC. This is price producer. And we also know that per unit taxes hurt the consumer. So they raise their cost per unit. That's the price and hurt the supplier because it's lower, lowering the benefit, right? The per unit benefit, which is the per, uh, producer's price. And then we're asked to find consumer surplus again. So consumer surplus for that particular unit, which I keep smearing right there, all the way to there again, still is the marginal private benefit. Now what's the cost to acquire? PC, so all the way up here, this curve again is MPB, it's a benefit line to the demander, okay? So that's my benefit, that's my cost. So this triangle right there, consumer surplus. Now again, we go to the producer's surplus, Right there, there's my PP, right? That's the per unit revenue or per unit benefit. Here's my per unit cost for that particular good. That vertical distance right there is the producer surplus for that good. All of these verticals, producer surplus, right? Now, government revenue, also measured in dollars per unit. That distance from PC to PP is the 
per unit tax, okay? So I take my per unit tax, how many goods are gonna be bought and sold? Well, hey, my new quantity, quantity tax, where QS equals QD after the tax, that was my Q market, by the way, is right there. So I take that vertical distance and I take it all the way, stop, right there, because nothing's being bought or sold to the right. So this rectangle right there is my government revenue, okay? Next, let's bring in some third parties. Let's say there's an externality here, okay? And I'm gonna make it really simple. I'll make the per unit externality equal to the per unit tax I've already implemented. So let's go ahead and draw that line as best I can, marginal social cost, okay? Now, just to make sure we've got the point that we're trying to get, I'm gonna pick this unit right here, which is not actually gonna come into play for anything, but so that's why I don't mind messing up my graph over here, but I want you to see something, okay? Really important, this vertical distance, when we make that unit, if we were to make that unit, would be the marginal private cost, the cost to the supplier. This additional vertical again, that's right, additional vertical. Remember, when we talk about the MSC, we should say it lies above. I do not like it when a student says the MSC lies to the left or lays to the left, whatever it is, is to the left. I wanted to say that the MSC is above, okay? Because this vertical distance is the per unit externality, okay? And hey, that vertical distance is the per unit, and that's the per unit, right? All those are per unit externalities, those vertical distances. But anyhow, marginal private cost of producing it, harm to third parties. If I take the full vertical, right? From this right here, all the way down to right there, I've got my marginal social cost, all right? So if we're asked, what's the harm to third parties um, after the tax? Let's just do it after the tax first, okay? Well, there's my vertical distance, right, between MPC and MSC. And I'm gonna say, for each unit that's produced, how many units are gonna be produced? Only to Q tax, right? So each of those verticals right there to write this line right there. So let's just do this, A, B, C. This is always very difficult for students, but it'd be this parallelogram. And what helps me find that harm to third parties even after the tax is me thinking vertically, right? There's my vertical uh, per unit externality, right? That's what that's measuring. And so I'm just gonna say, okay, that vertical distance, that vertical, that vertical, that vertical, that vertical, over each one of these units of outputs, all the way to right here, A, B, C, that's my harm to third parties. And if I said, hey, what would be my harm to third parties before the tax was implemented, if we had a free market or a market for which we were not intervening, okay? Well, I'm gonna have to add a little bit to this, okay? Move that up right there, D, E, F. So what it would be is that's my harm to third parties, how much it's gonna be bought and sold now, all the way to QM. So that vertical distance, okay, let's just go ahead and mark that vertical distance, that vertical distance, that vertical distance, keep doing that, keep doing those verticals, all the way to right there above QM, right there. So this parallelogram right here, from this to that dot, down to that dot, down, what's the harm to third parties if we didn't intervene? A. B, C, let me get rid of these so we're not confused when I say A. A, B, C, D, E, F, that parallelogram. If we think vertically, okay, I'm telling you, it clears everything up. We can find the government revenue or the government outlay, harm to third parties or benefit to third parties if we had a positive externality. We can find the consumer surplus, the producer surplus. All we're ever doing is finding that vertical that matters and then heading to our output level. All right, whew, <laughs> hope you stuck with it. I know it's a bit confusing, guys, but I actually think when you start realizing that when you see this curve as MPC, you should think vertically. When you see this curve as MPB, you should think vertically. Of course, when you see an MSC or an MSB, you should think vertically because those things are being measured vertically. And guess what? They're the dependent variable in that particular function. It makes things easier. Maybe watch it twice. I really think if you get this one, it's gonna make things easier. Talk to you in the next video.